In the past three years, more than 10,000 men, women and children have died trying to cross this stretch of water. Migrants. People. Each one had a story, a hope, a dream. Over just six days, we'll witness the intensity of the rescue attempts, the helplessness of the migrants, and the hopelessness of the effort to end the crisis. Keep breathing. Come on. Come on. This is what death and survival looks like. As a journalist, I've reported on almost every aspect of this continent's migration crisis, everything except the most dangerous part of the migrants' journey, the sea crossing, where thousands are saved and thousands die. There is a calmness to our early morning departure. The sea is flat and the air warm. There is apprehension and there's adrenaline. We're traveling with rescuers, medics, and sailors. On board the Topaz Responder, a floating ambulance. They know their roles, and they know the challenges too. But the next six days will be among the hardest they've experienced. This boat comes in port. The new vessels make like this. They can. Uh, you get a crush injury. This not to happen again. That is the monster. And we'll be with them through it all, as observers who become participants. We can work around your what you uh, advise. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can work around too. We'll see how bonds are formed between us all, and with those who'll be saved. We did have a case like that. We come alongside, and the stretch could actually be taken from the foredeck. Or the aft. Because in the end, this team of professionals are just people saving other people. Malta is the ship's base. From here, we're heading south towards Libya. It's from this war torn country that so many thousands leave looking for a better life in Europe. Smugglers bring the migrants together on the beaches of towns dotted along the coastline. But few of them are actually from Libya. The 300,000 who've made this journey in 2016 are from all over Africa, the Middle East and beyond. They've travelled to Libya because that's the gateway to Europe and in this lawless place no one is stopping them from coming. The sea they think they'll cross is vast. It'll take us 24 hours from Malta to the area where their boats will run into trouble. The journey south is the time for the crew to train and get to know each other. And to kind of bring me in, try and bring me around the back. We recover the casualty first. Somebody always needs to look at that person. There are three teams here, and they've not all worked together before. The Topaz crew run the ship. Men from Tanzania, Russia, Ukraine, Poland. The medics are from the Red Cross, a doctor and her nurses. Okay. And the rescuers are the backbone, MOAS, the Migrant Offshore Aid Station, a charity. They don't make a profit, and they're not political. My name's uh, Nicholas Romanuk. I'm the uh, able seaman, uh, so crew on the FRDC, and uh, rescue swimmer. Uh, so uh, when we have a rescue, uh, I go on board the rescue craft, um, and if uh, someone needs to board one of the migrant vessels, uh, the on-scene coordinator can give me the green light, and I'll go on board uh, and start uh, stabilizing, stabilizing the vessel and keeping people calm. For the rescuers like Nick, there is an anxiety to this downtime as we head south because he knows what's to come. When we have rough weather like this, it can be pretty quiet for a couple of days. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, people will then 
everyone who wants to leave, they start kind of piling up on the beaches, and they, they'll all leave at the same time. Um, so uh, that can mean up to 20 boats, maybe 30 boats. Was, I think what uh, some people were coming across last week was, I think they had 6,500 people in, in one day. The crew have different ways of passing the time. It's a fish. Madina will, will move. There's like two or three black barrels, and they're attached together so they float. And there's a length of line underneath them, and there'll be palm trees attached to that. And it creates a shady area so the fish come in, because the fish don't like to be hanging out in the sun either. And they congregate around shady areas. So we're going to troll backwards and forwards and see if we can catch one of the fish. For dinner. Well, lunch if we're quick enough. <laughs> we calculate seven. Yeah. It's just gone now. Uh... 5 a.m. and we've just been woken up by the team here on the Moas migrant rescue boat. Um, they should be rescued pretty shortly. So. Can you tell us what's going on? Yeah, so we had a report on the radio. Uh, Italian Coast Guard or naval asset called up a uh, probably a tanker in Libyan waters. Uh, who is reporting that there are some uh, rubber boats around them. Uh, just trying to get some more information at the moment, but we're moving west uh, in case they've moved away from the coast so we could uh, help them out if they need help. It's like two miles to reach this area. And how far away from the... We are here. If they're doing five knots, it's ten miles. Search and rescue team leader Marco Cauchy explains that there's a migrant dinghy two miles off the Libyan coast. That's well inside dangerous Libyan waters. But the smugglers will only have provided the migrants with limited fuel for an overcrowded, poor quality dinghy. And so a rescue will have to come. Coordination is by radio from the Italian authorities in Rome. It's time to move. It's only when you come face to face with the migrant boats that you realize just how crazy, how dangerous and how desperate this whole thing is. The red drum at the back of the boat is their fuel tank, so that's an open fuel tank basically. It's not enclosed, so it's, those drums are just full of meat petrol. The boat is packed and the challenge for the team is massive. We've moved up close now to the migrants. The job of the rescue teams now is to get the life jackets from this rescue boat onto the dinghy. Listen to instructions from this man, from this... Paul and Nick need to take control to keep people calm. Most here can't swim. We're 12 miles off the Libyan coast. Europe is 200 miles to the north. They must stay seated until the main rescue vessel can be brought alongside. Mid-rescue, a surprise, the Libyan Coast Guard turns up. These are the people who are supposed to be stopping the migrants. It's clear quickly that they're really not up to it. Hello, I'm Mark from Sky News. How are you? Salam alaikum. We manage a few words with them. They told us they do try, but it's impossible, they say. There are so many leaving. This is what a good rescue looks like. No one died, no one was injured. Please stay seated, we will make line by line, okay? Okay, Saman? They're checked 
and within a few hours are transferred to another vessel. They'll head to Italy. We're going to take care of you slowly, but you must sit down and wait. But here's the uncomfortable reality. Where are you from? Uh, Morocco. Morocco. Uh, and you, Morocco? Yes. yes. Uh, and where are you from? Pakistan. 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 Huh? Pakistan. Pakistan. Libya. Libya. Morocco. Morocco. My nationality is Moroccan. I'm from uh, Libya. Is working. Many of these people have no right to be in Europe. They won't get asylum because they're not from countries at war. They're not persecuted. They're just escaping the hopelessness of poverty. But if they'd not been rescued, they would almost certainly have died. And by the morning, the crew will be faced with an extraordinary challenge. It's just hours since yesterday's rescue. They're out again. The crew of the Topaz Responder have trained for this. But in the darkness out here, everything is so much harder. So much can go wrong. My concern is if the rubber dinghy has been out since yesterday, the whole day, uh, they might be severely dehydrated because they usually live without water. So we might see severe medical conditions out there. As we approach the migrant dinghy, it's clear immediately just how challenging this will be. There are well over a hundred on board, men and women and babies held high. Bonjour, bonjour. English or French? French? Bonjour. We are there, we are here to save you. Save you all. You need to stay calm and stay seated. Everybody sit down. Everybody, calm down. Stop talking. Arrête de parler. Arrête de parler. The priority is to get life jackets to everyone. But as the first few are thrown, they all reach to snatch them. The rescuers back off and attempt to bring back order. Crowd control. At sea, at night, with people who can't swim and who are terrified. This is almost impossible. Well, the massive, massive challenge for the team here is trying to ensure that everyone stays seated. If too many people get up on that flimsy boat, it'll turn over, they'll all be in the water, and few of them can swim. So after a very tense few moments, Nick has managed to get himself onto the dinghy. He reckons it's going to be easier to calm the migrants down if he's on there himself. Now they can resume the delivery of the life jackets. With the main rescue vessel alongside the dinghy, they need to be offloaded one by one with care and order. Joey, start! Start, Joey! Joey, start! If they all move at once, the stability will be lost. The first few are brought off safely, the babies. Do something! But then, 
There's a rush. And then this. In the water are gallons of fuel from the dinghy, and they're swallowing it. Jump, jump, you can see. As journalists, we have an obligation for detachment, to observe and to report. But here, a human tragedy is unfolding in front of us. We are now part of it. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Keep breathing. Come on. Come on. His name is Abdul Latif. One, two, three. And he survived. Oh. In the chaos, it takes us all a few moments to realize that rescuer Paul Chamberlain is in trouble. rescue was done and then uh, out in the water spotted more life jackets. Um, it really has turned into the nightmare now. At least one person uh, is dead, perhaps more. Saving more people. <laughs> Seven people were lost yesterday. A hundred and thirty four were saved. And that's what the crew must now focus on. They are exhausted. They're cold and wet, but alive. Some only just. There's not much I can do for her at the moment, just to observe her. The six children all survived. Three babies with their mothers, an older boy too. But the other two? brothers have lost their parents. For now, remarkably, they seem oblivious. There are some here who are refugees. Where are your parents? My parents, I don't know where they are. No, my mom is in the camps in Ethiopia, and my dad's, I don't hear about him. Like Queef, 
who wants to finish his education away from South Sudan's war. What is your Commerce. subject? Commerce. Commerce. Yes. But most here are not refugees. They are just escaping that hopelessness of poverty. I'm going to Europe to so look for something, you know, work and get some money, you know. I become a good citizenship there so that I can be able to rescue my family because in Nigeria the economy is not, it's not really helping us at all. They just want a better future and with such simple ambitions. My plan is that I want to continue my work again in Italy. I want to go and learn how to show a game better than the one I am before. That is where I left Nigeria. How strong must that desire be to put themselves through what we've now seen? Twenty-four hours later, they're in Europe. Lives saved and bonds made. But their journey, their recovery, is far from over. Some will get asylum, some will be sent home. Many will disappear into an illegal limbo. Europe's ability to deal with such an extraordinary movement of people is failing terribly. But those who choose to save lives won't stop. If people see the reality, it could actually be out here. I think if they saw the reality of uh, the human side of it, the human suffering, then they would um, they, they'd jump in um, and help out as well, for sure. R regardless of what they think sitting at home yeah. uh, now. <laughs>